Hello beautiful people, welcome to Kitengela Rabbitry, where quality is served. My name is Mary Mpayo, a young rabbit farmer. We are located in Kitengela, along the old Namanga Road, where you will find all the rabbit breeds that you need. Welcome to the video that we were doing before, the common mistakes that rabbit farmers do when doing rabbit farming. Welcome. So in this video, I'm going to break down the most common mistakes that us rabbit farmers do when doing rabbit farming. So number one point is that some of the mistakes that we do when breeding is like taking your male rabbit to the female. Females tend to be territorial animals, so they tend to uh, protect their territory. So you should always take your female to the male because when you introduce the male to the female territory, they tend to be very aggressive and fight away the male. Also when you bring the male to the female, the male will tend to familiarize itself with the environment so they will tend to not breed like they have to concentrate on looking at that environment and familiarize. So it will take a long time for them to breed the female. Another mistake that rabbit farmers do is starting with too many rabbits without a strategy of how you are going to manage them. Remember that rabbits don't look like any other animal because they tend to give birth more quickly and a lot with a lot of litter. Like an example, a rabbit can give you up to 10 liters. So the rabbits tend to give birth to very, very many rabbits. So without a plan or without a proper caging, like the number of cages that you require, and you put a lot of rabbits, like let's say you have like 10 females and you start breeding them. By this time, the 10 females will give you like 30 females when they give birth. So I mean, most of the time, the t rabbits tend to be very many and very overwhelming for you as a farmer. So you need to have a strategy for you to look at how you're going to uh, strategize on keeping these rabbits to fit in your space, the space that you have, the cages to be enough and also have a strategy in marketing also before you start. So you don't have to overwhelm with yourself with so many rabbits as a starter. So you always have a strategy like putting like a, uh, the required number that you'll have and your budget so that you can start rabbit farming. Another point is like uh, as rabbit farmers you need to be ready to slaughter your rabbit. I know these animals are so hairy and so like you you can become attached to it most of the time because they look like pets so um, you should be ready to slaughter the animals because this thing you've entered it into like a business uh, like a rabbit farmer you've entered it as a business so you need to be ready to slaughter when you have an order you have to be ready to slaughter so at, at the age of four months that is when the rabbit is ready to be slaughtered you need to uh, separate those that you need to slaughter them and be ready to slaughter. Like me myself, I just slaughter my rabbits and uh, give clients when I have an order. So it's like it's something that you need hard to do it, but you have, oh, as a rabbit farmer, you entered into this thing as a business, so you just have to do it. Another mistake that uh, rabbit farmers do is uh, getting uh, new bees, like the new rabbits from other farms, and you assume that these rabbits are not pregnant. Most of the time you can get a rabbit which is four months, five months, and uh, by mistake it was pregnant. So uh, most of the time as a rabbit farmer, you have to check whether the rabbit is pregnant because you imagine you isolating that rabbit. Okay, you've gotten the rabbit, you isolate them, and then you've not prepared the nest box for them and everything about uh, giving birth for it to be to give birth well. So at the end of the day when it gives birth, the litter all die or you can find that the mother has stepped on the litter or it becomes stressed because there's no litter box for them. This is a mistake that uh, farmers uh, tend to do because they always assume that this rabbit is not pregnant. Um, I've experienced it myself but I've come to know how to check whether a rabbit is pregnant. So uh, this is how you check, you hold your rabbit so uh, below this stomach right here is a little bit aggressive so just below the stomach right here you can press it and fill like the ball below the stomach you can feel a rabbit when it's pregnant by two weeks so when you get the newbies you can always check immediately and also after two weeks after getting them always check the stomach 
feel it, when you feel the ball, it's pregnant. When you feel that there are no balls down here, it's not pregnant. Another mistake that us rabbit farmers do is overfeeding your rabbit. I know someone will tend to make your rabbit so big you want to introduce a lot of feeds to them. Remember these animals have a very complicated digestive system. So you need to uh, feed them at the minimum required feeds so that it cannot be uh, overweight or, or overfed. Remember overfeeding causes bloating to most of, mostly the small, smaller rabbits and also overweight uh, tend to make the bigger rabbits not become productive because let's see uh, an example of the female rabbits when you overfeed them they become so big and then they reduce the number of litter an example is a big a very huge rabbit will tend to give you like two uh, two or three at most litter when it gives birth but those rabbits that are not overfed they tend to give you 10 to 14 litres so overfeeding is a problem because the litter will reduce and also for the male when you overfeed it you want your male to become so huge it brings uh, the male to become not active you'll give it to the female and then it won't even recognize that the female is there so you should always avoid overfeeding you know bloating also causes death mostly to those small ones also the big ones when you overfeed them they bloat so avoid overfeeding as a rabbit farmer another mistake that farmers uh, rabbit farmers do is changing the rabbit diet fast remember i've told you that the rabbit uh, digestive system is very very sensitive so as rabbit farmers you need to uh, when you want to change its diet you want to do it slowly gradually you don't have to change the diet like drastically this will cause uh, uh, interference with this system causing bloating and then death bloating is a very uh, sensitive matter in rabbits because bloating doesn't have medication once the rabbit is bloated the next thing it will die so to prevent death in the animals don't change its feet drastically maybe when you want to introduce like treats like uh, vegetables remember it's dried vegetables you have to do it slowly by slowly you don't have to do it like today you are giving your rabbits pellets tomorrow you just change all of a sudden and give them vegetables throughout you have to uh, change it drastically even if you're going to buy your rabbits you have to ask the person that you're buying from what do you usually feed your rabbits you don't have to come in yourself you start feeding them something that they they haven't gotten used to remember these animals are very sensitive don't kill your rabbits Rabbits are prey, so we have predators who prey for these animals. They are very tiny animals and they are herbivores, we all know that. So rabbits have predators like the snakes, the rats, we also have dogs, we also have cats. They are all rabbit predators. So when you're constructing your rabbit house, always remember that they are prey. Always ensure that the rabbit house is well enclosed. Always close the doors for your rabbit uh, uh, rabbit hatches when you're not there, when you're without monitoring. Always make sure that they are safe. Uh, strategy that I've put across with the, mostly with the rats, or we put lighting, lighting around the house. So when you uh, put on the light at night, the rats will not prey into the cages and eat the rabbit kids. I found like many rabbits complaining of rats being a prey. So what you do, you always put lighting in your house at night. When you put on the light, the rabbit, the rat will not enter into the next nest box because the mother rabbit will always uh, see the rat, rat coming and it will frighten it and run away. So always keep your rabbit safe. Don't uh, give them to prey. I know us rabbit farmers, we like uh, this. Most of us will put these rabbits outside. Uh, maybe on rooftops, maybe on balconies. When you're doing this, ensure that the cages are well enclosed and well reinforced. So, because also birds, flying birds are also predators for these little animals. Another mistake that rabbit farmers do is having the wrong sizes of cages when uh, building the cages. Always ensure that you've 
you have a mentor or a monitor or you visited a farm before building uh, rabbit cages. They have the required size, the required height for them because these animals require like a little space for them to run out, run around the cages. They don't like feeling like enclosed. No one likes feeling enclosed. So when you make your rabbit feel enclosed, they tend to become stressed and uh, you know stress is not good for rabbits. So always have the required cage height, cage, even the rabbit housing. Always being sure that the housing is well, well ventilated, like the air circulation is well uh, in that house because the heat and the soft air makes the rabbit mostly sneeze or have the chronic or respiratory diseases. Another mistake that rabbit farmers do is not having the baby wires. Like uh, in their in their nursing cages, we also we always have those cages that you separate for your mothers to give birth. We always have to have the baby wires, like with a small hole, so that the baby rabbits don't fall down. You know, when you have those big faces, when the rabbit gives birth, maybe the kids will fall down uh, through the wire, and you'll find that their kids have uh, died at the end of the day. So to ensure that your kids don't die, always have the baby wires so that you ensure that the rabbits give birth well. Even those rabbits that do not give birth inside the nest box, you always have, uh, find them uh, giving birth outside the nest box. When you have the baby wire, you will save the babies because they won't fall down and uh, the mother will always secure a place for them to give birth. And it also, the baby wire prevents the babies from hurting their legs. You see the big wires, uh, big boxes, wires. The baby, when it uh, puts its leg, most of the time you find it injuring its leg because of the big spaces in their wires. Another mistake that rabbit farmers do is not ensuring that they have biosecurity measures in their uh, farms. One of the ways that you ensure that biosecurity measures is done is like when you have visitors from outside, always ensure that, that they sanitize their legs before coming into your farm. And also, uh, always ensure that the cages are washed with a, with a disinfectant. Disinfect the cages that a rabbit has died. You should not, uh, also the nest box says after one rabbit has given birth and you want to give the nest box to another rabbit, always ensure that you sanitize the, the, the nest box. Sanitation is very important for rabbits because rabbits are clean animals. Remember that rabbits, once they are, once they are clean, no diseases in your farm. So ensure that you prevent the diseases in your farm but by ensuring that best security measures are put into place. Another mistake that rabbit farmers do is uh, by introducing outside rabbits, like uh, you brought another a newbie from another farm and you don't have the quarantine cages. Always have the quarantine cages that you put your rabbits, the new rabbits, to ensure that these rabbits, maybe they were sick, whatever they were, so to ensure that the disease does not spread to your cages and to other rabbits that you have, ensure that you put them uh, quarantined like for uh, seven days or 14 days before you introduce them to back to your cages. So ensure that these animals are uh, safe enough for you to bring them into the cages. 